Hey, good evening, church family. Welcome to another Live at Five. Um, tonight, we want to spend a little bit of time in Psalm 54, just working our way through those six verses, kind of see what's going on in David's life here and in this psalm. And if you remember the last time we were together, um, we referenced Psalm 52 as it related to a response to an event going on in David's life. And that event um, was the period in time in his life when he's already been anointed as the next king of Israel to come after Saul. But he's in that stage where he is spending most of his days running from Saul. He is trying to preserve his own life. Saul wants to kill him. Um, and so he's, he's running away at every opportunity, again, to avoid being killed by Saul. And we said that 52 was written in reference to an event recorded in 1 Samuel chapters 21 and 22. Well, as we get to Psalm 54, um, the kind of the background, if you will, for this psalm is linked almost directly to um, Psalm 52 and that, that same 1 Samuel event. And it's actually written in response to an event that takes place in 1 Samuel 23. So I want to encourage you, um, as you work your way through 54 to go back and read um, what's going on in 1 Samuel chapter 23. And you're going to see that David is really at the exact same point in his life. Um, he is running away from Saul. Um, Doeg, the Edomite, if you remember from the last time we were together, has just massacred all the priests. He has massacred the whole um, town of Nob. And um, there's one man who has... Uh, survived and is actually now with David, um, kind of letting him know what's going on and what's taking place. Um, but Psalm 54, like we said, is is a psalm in which David kind of lays out his feelings and his emotions as to what's going on. Um, you kind of get a glimpse almost, if you will, that like David's kind of reaching his wits end too. Um, and, and we have these feelings of rejection and these feelings of betrayal from from David going on here as he is again um, trying to preserve his own life because Saul wants to kill him but in in these verses here in 54 um, even as David talks about being betrayed and and being rejected and being let down one thing um, that David emphasizes through all of it is that God is his source of steadfast help that God is his uh, place that he can come back to, that God is, is his unchanging security when everything else in his life seems to be rejecting him and betraying him. And what I want to highlight um, as we dive in here a little bit is no matter what's going on in David's life, what is his response? Okay, Because I think if we, we read through 54, we can relate to what's going on with David. Like we've all experienced times in life where we maybe have felt betrayed, where we felt rejected, where we feel like we don't know where to turn, we don't know where to go, we're not sure if anybody in this moment has our backs. But when David found himself there, it was God who was his source of strength and God was the place that he turned. And what I want us to notice is what David does. Because essentially Psalm 54 is a prayer. That is David's go-to response, is to pray, is to turn to God, to have a conversation with God, to lay everything out there before God, understanding that God is the only one in his life who can be that steadfast help, that source of strength for him. And so I just want to look at four parts to David's prayer here in Psalm 54. In the first part, we read about in the first three verses. And in the first three verses, David unfiltered, lays out his situation before God. He says in verse 3, For strangers are attacking me. Violent people are trying to kill me. They care nothing for God. So David just lays it out there right before God. Here's what I'm dealing with. Here's what I'm going through. The second part of David's prayer is in verse 4. And in verse 4, he acknowledges who God is. He says, But God is my helper. The Lord keeps me alive. And so even though he's being betrayed and rejected by everyone else around him, 
It is God who is his source of strength. It is God who is his help. The third part of David's prayer we see in verse 5. And he says, May the evil plans of my enemies be turned against them. Do you as, do as you promised and put an end to them. So what David is saying here in verse 5 is, is he's laying out again a pretty pointed request to God. So he's laid out his situation. He's acknowledged who God is, that God is his source of help and strength. And now he's making a request to God. He says, God, this is what I want you to do. This is what I am begging you to do. And the fourth part of his prayer is how the psalm ends, verses 6 and 7. He says, I will sacrifice a voluntary offering to you. I will praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from my troubles and helped me to triumph over my enemies. And so David concludes his prayer with a promise to praise God upon deliverance. And so, church, we see David's response to a difficult situation. We see David's response to the betrayal and rejection going on in his life. And David's response is prayer. David's response is to invest fully in his relationship with God, to turn to God, to lay everything out there. But he concludes his prayer by promising to praise God once he has been delivered. And so that is kind of my challenge to you, my challenge to me, is if you find yourself in those situations, Take David's example and turn to God in prayer. Lay your request out before him. Acknowledge who he is. Tell God what you want, but then be sure to praise him once you have been delivered from that situation. Thanks for joining with us again tonight. Have a great week.